The key uh, bridge between local and global stuff, a stable, a stable manifold. If I draw a picture, what I have in mind is that if I have a trajectory and I start in its neighborhood, what will happen in finite time, that neighborhood will deform. And that local information, we know how it works because if you start with some deviation at time zero, we know that it's the Jacobian matrix that's totally computable from our laws if this is a theoretical calculation. So we know what that thing does. But now we can do something bolder. So suppose that this is actually living on the periodic orbit. What we have learned very early in the course is that to linear approximation, the set of ratios of the evaluated on periodic orbit, various dx, i's, dx, j, original ones over the ones that come back in a small distance limit, infinitesimal limit that's called Jacobian. That's, we actually know that that's invariant in the sense that if we compute the multipliers, Okay, multipliers for this thing. There'll be a bunch of them that'll be expanding. There'll be a bunch of them that we have eliminated. And that's why we made this long detour in sections and slices. So they're expanding ones. And there'll be a bunch of them that are contracting. And uh, these things are invariant under all smooth coordinate changes. So the you know, profound and deep property of the orbit. Now, the eigenvectors are not invariant because they depend on our coordinates. They depend on how we place this thing in the, into the state space. You know, what is our coordinates in the state space? But associated with every one of these guys, are uh, so expanding on these ones, contracting on the ones that make neighborhood thinner. There's a set of eigenvectors which depends how we do this, but once we choose the coordinates, you know, they're very well, de they're well defined and uh, they define any place on the orbit. So you can transport them and when they come back, they'll align themselves with the original eigenvector. So there's some kind of natural rotating frame for this thing. And we can use them to start building our global chart of all possible things. Now, I'm not totally happy because uh, it's always the same thing. When you get down to work, you have to put it in coordinates. And even though the concept is more beautiful, the coordinates are not. So the main thing about these guys is that they provide a bridge between local and global. And the way to do this is that you can define stable unstable manifolds and we can define them as sets of points. So stable manifold is set of all points in the entire state space such that if I measure the distance from the equilibrium point, it's a point like that. I, actually, I don't measure the distance, I, I just see how the map goes, and that's important. This goes to zero as t goes to zero. So what that means is that when I look at, for example, this periodic point in Poincaré section, there is a whole world out of there which, whose dimension depends on number of stable dimensions in a problem. So we are in million dimensions, but there are, you know, let's say, seven stable dimensions. That would be a bad situation. Okay, we are in ten dimensions and there are seven stable directions. Then this manifold, this set of points will be seven dimensional. 
and they'll have a property that if I just pick any point here, it will move and at the infinite time it'll land at the equilibrium point. So associated with every fixed point in the Poincaré section, there is a whole world out of there. But it's very small compared to dimensionality of the whole problem, but everybody falls in. But because by our construction, they're either expanding or contracting eigenvalues and no marginal eigenvalues, there is the, another manifold which is called the unstable manifold. It is a set of all points which if you look at the past, so we look where we came from, that goes to zero as t goes to infinity. So that means that these things that as we went before in time they were going in expanding directions. If we go backwards in time, what used to expand now contracts and it's same definition just with a time reverse. So then there's another manifold which is the point that forward in time will run away but they all originated in the infinitesimal neighborhood of our fixed point. This stable unstable manifold for each point actually partitions the space because they have a, their dimension is the full dimension of the space. Now how do we get grip? You know, this is mathematical definition and it's a bit useless because if you just try to do this as an experiment you'll take lots of points and they'll all run away. Because, yeah, it has to be on a small manifold which is curved, complicated, etc. that at infinite time which you don't control numerically lands on this thing. So you need a more useful definition. And you observe that actually there is a natural coordinate system provided by dynamics. As you live in this Poincaré section you have locally some number of stable eigenvectors, these guys here. And they're the little corner of this complicated manifold that's curved all over the place in a neighborhood of the fixed point, the linear neighborhood. Just a nice little neighborhood spanned by tangent vectors. And there is some other set of directions, which are the eigenvectors, unstable ones. So in a little neighborhood here you have total control. Can you project your total control of a little neighborhood of your little family into global control of everything? There is a very intuitive, nice way to do it, which is to realize that while this is a hypersurface, which is complicated, etc., in some sense it has edges because in each one of these directions if you take some point close by it'll march away on a line which is within the unstable manifold so the one dimensional line so it'll be like an edge of your domain because these vectors which are not usual orthogonal span some kind of parallel pipette and you can actually sort of expand that pipet projected into the space by going forward in time. So you can dis define lines, <coughs> or if you have complex eigenvectors planes, I'll, I'll do this in a second, which kind of give you a thing that locally spans, because locally they're linear vector space, so locally it spans everybody who is unstable. But it also gives you a description globally where the unstable volume will be, even though it's going to be curvilinear and not so sweet. That you do then by looking at your eigenvectors. And the expanding ones will satisfy the Jacobian at time t is a multiplier e to the j of the thing evaluated at your equilibrium point. 
So that defines, and those things you already have, and in next lecture we'll need them very badly because they're very essential in finding where the equilibrium and periodic orbits are. Solving this linear equation helps us a great deal. You know, if this is larger in magnitude than one expanding, if it's smaller than one is contracting, for people who are watching the camera, this says expanding, this says contracting. So the multipliers are either greater or smaller than one. The exponents are greater or smaller than zero, they're logarithm. Or there could be a pair of eigenvectors. And if you have complex eigenvectors, ve then, then the eigenvectors come as complex pairs and the multipliers come as complex pairs, meaning the magnitude doesn't change but the imaginary part of multiplier changes. And I won't cover it here, but if you have some other symmetry, like if you have symplectic symmetry of Hamiltonian systems of mechanics, it could be further quadruplets and stuff like that, but if you don't have any other symmetries, this is a real matrix of either real or complex pair eigenvalues, and that's all there is to it. How do you now use this information? Anyway, I don't know where to stick all these letters because there is a time index, there is a spatial coordinate index, there is the eigenvalue index, etc. So the notation tends to get confused every so often. But basically, if I put it in a bracket, it's counting the eigenvalues. And if I leave this bracket out, or parenthesis, I usually mean the coordinate label in d-dimension. Ith component of a vector in d-dimensions.